going with a slight change of format here. We're going to focus on diorama accessories with these 3D prints. And these are definitely a lot of fun to paint. So all of these 3D prints that you'll see in this segment are all printed by West Burton. So if you need any of these items, go ahead and click on the link that will be in the description or copy and paste and you'll be able to get in touch with him and order some of these prints for yourself. These are definitely a lot of fun to work on, certainly different than working on an action figure simply because there's so much more possibilities that you can do with these. And we're gonna start with the payphone. So I ended up receiving two payphones from West and one of them is smaller than the other. This is a smaller scale, roughly about a 1 uh, 18th scale. So it would be more in line with your like Ninja Turtles, your five and four inch action figures. Now this is a solid base all the way through. So I had a drill to be able to run my wiring into it and into the compartment up at the top, which is also solid. So I had to drill into that. And you can see here the marks that I made to make my perforations with the drill bit all the way through. Así es que este teléfono de paga está hecho de resina y es completamente sólido aquí al respaldo donde ves el alambre y tuve que perforarlo de abajo hacia arriba. Este es como se ve antes de pintar y ya que puse el primer y coloqué la luz donde yo la quiero, este es como se ve. Y le puse un tablero de que esté parpareando la luz. De hecho, tiene una variedad de opciones. Once I sanded and primed the unit, I went ahead and installed the lights temporarily and hooked them up to the flicker board. And this is what it looks like. And I did change it, as you can tell in this next sequence. I went ahead and painted it into a black because I wanted to use the rub and buff. And actually, it turns out pretty cool to make it look like a metallic finish. And I made the perforations on the side in the shape of a phone, the old style cutouts they used to have. But I love this flicker board. It, uh, they actually call it a scary board because it does have that effect of it being uh, uh, a, a scary flickering effect. This is what it looks like once it's completely finished off with the rub and buff. And I didn't show you what the rub and buff does. You just really just uh, dab it on with a towel or a swab and and spread it around and then let it dry and then you buff it out and then you actually just polish it. But it, this is what it turns out. But let me show you a little bit more of what I've done to it. Así es que aquí tenemos la pieza semi terminada con una pintura metálica y con las perforaciones como los teléfonos anteriores. Como ves, los calambres todavía no los he escondido dentro de la unidad. So this is what the product looks once it's completed with the flicker board, the button cell with its own switch. I've hidden it behind that panel underneath. Even though I did carve out an opening to put them in there, it was easier to keep it even uh, cleaner by having that panel on the back. And as you can tell, I added the decals and it looks that much nicer. Aquí tenemos ahora el producto terminado aún con las calcamonías que lo hacen resaltar todavía mejor. Tenemos un tablero que se prende y se apaga y tenemos una pila pequeña que está escondida dentro de la unidad y todavía tengo acceso al botón de selección para poder cambiar o más bien apagar y prender la unidad. Este no tiene botón de selección en cuanto a cómo se prenden las luces, pero como vemos aquí ya se ve listo para utilizar. Now for this unit, as you can tell in the two links there, I obtained my lighting from lightmybricks.com, that's the board with the lights, and then I got the button cell battery with the switch from evandesigns.com. Both of those together provided me the proper, or the proper size to be able to fit into this small unit. Now the decals that you see on this unit are actually cutouts from a comic book that I glued on there. The graffiti is made by me so it just plays the part. And as you can tell, I left the on-off switch accessible so that I can make this unit function. So 
So let's move on to the second phone that I received and this is a 1 12th scale. So this is so much nicer to work on because it's obviously bigger, more room to work on it. And I used a slightly larger circuit board or uh, I should say effects board that allows me to do a little bit more with the lights. It actually has a selection switch on it. And the process is very similar to the small phone. Once you sand and primer and you're ready to paint, I used an acrylic ink to paint it black. And then I switched because I switched uh, my decision to change my mind on what color I really wanted. I didn't want to duplicate the small phone. So I changed the color. You'll see that in just a moment. But I did use an airbrush. It is so much easier, so much quicker. And the paint goes so much nicer, making it a very nice finish for a product like this. Este es el segundo teléfono que me llegó y es en escala de uh, 1 a 12. Entonces aquí tenemos más espacio, más grande para poder también que modificar y pintar. En este caso después que lo has lijado y le has puesto el primer, ya estás listo para pintarlo. Y aquí estoy utilizando una tinta que es acrílica, lo cual cubre muy bien y todavía mucho mejor con un audiógrafo. Así es que les recomiendo que si tienen acceso a uno o pueden conseguir un aerógrafo, es mucho mejor el resultado con esta clase o técnica de pintura. So while the ink dries on this main unit, I'm going to move along and show you how I perforated the actual handset. I actually removed it from this unit. I wasn't able to do that on the smaller one, but on this larger phone, it was pretty much just attached very, very lightly, and I was able to remove it with a small X-Acto blade. I then drilled one bottom end, or the bottom end, and I attached a piece of jewelry chain that is actually for bracelets, which really, at this scale, looks like a phone cord that goes onto a payphone. Una vez que hayas perforado el teléfono, puedes pegarle la cadena que simula un cable de teléfono. So once you drill out that handset, you can actually glue in the bracelet chain, which simulates a phone cord for a payphone. Keep in mind that this top portion of the phone is actually hollow, so it doesn't require a lot of force or a lot of drill time to perforate the unit and then glue down the cable or the jewelry chain that looks like a cable. Ten en mente que esta porción del teléfono está hueca y no requiere mucho esfuerzo para hacer la perforación y entonces pegar el cable o la cadena que parece un cable con pega loca. The one thing that's really going to help you out is gluing a magnet to the handset and then the opposite magnet to the actual phone. That way it stays in place when you hang up the phone. Ahora si colocas un imán en ambas piezas del teléfono, puedes colocarlo sin problema alguno de que se vaya a caer de su lugar. So in an effort to not duplicate what I did earlier on the smaller phone, I decided to paint it a different color entirely. So I went ahead with a blue. And this is the blue that I chose again. I used an airbrush to apply the color over what I already had done previously. 
En un esfuerzo por no duplicar lo que hice con el teléfono más pequeño, decidí pintarlo de otro color. Este es el color azul que yo decidí usar y entonces cubrí la pintura anterior que había hecho como el otro teléfono. Now the little black rectangle that you see there is the actual effects board. It is a pulse board and it does have a selection switch and you can select from a pulse or you can select from a breathing effect or a flicker effect. So there's three different choices you have to operate this unit. Al igual que el teléfono anterior, también tuve que perforar la base para poder colocar el tablero de efectos junto con la pila y la pieza que tiene el botón de apagar y prender. Now, as with the first unit, I also had to drill this unit to make space for the circuit board or the effects board, the battery and the switch. And as you can see, these are two separate pieces. So I had to glue them together using Gorilla Glue. Now this Gorilla Glue does expand, so you just want to use a very thin application of it so that it does not cause problems when you are sanding. That's the Gorilla Glue that's in the back, and you're going to glue both halves. Una vez que logres pegar las dos mitades, entonces puedes lijarlo y limpiarlo. Y recuerda que no uses mucho de ese resistor porque si sí se expande y te puede causar problemas al lijar la pieza. Pero eso es como lo ves ya pegado. El tablero está en su lugar. Todavía tiene los alambres dirigidos arriba a la porción. Solamente falta pegarlo con la pila y el switch para prender y apagarlo. Now that the two halves are glued together, I need to attach the battery and the wires that are from that switch to the effects board. Unfortunately, these are two separate companies, two separate systems. Now this cable here is from Light My Bricks. That actually goes to the connector on the effects board. The other half of that wire, I actually have to cut it and I have to solder it onto the switch. And this is the top unit with, that is actually hollow. So I was able to cut out that top face of it and replace it with a diffuser as what you saw earlier just a few moments ago. The top light is the one that is, has the effect, the yellow, and the bottom light is the one shining upon the phone. Now the weathering here I just did by sanding the paint. So there's no big signs to it. Just take a fine grit sandpaper and sand that down. And then sand down any other portions that may be uh, unsightly. This is the unit that has the battery. We're gonna test it out one more time. I have already soldered the wires together. And as you can see, the hollow at the top, it is actually functioning. This is what it will look like with the diffuser on the top of it. Como ya ves aquí, hemos colocado el tablero y el alambre al switch ya escondidos bajo la superficie de estas cubiertas. Y ahora tenemos más selecciones porque tenemos dos botones de selección que están expuestos, el de encender y apagar y obviamente el de las selecciones del tablero. So as you can tell, I have left the two selection switches, or I should say the selection switch and the on-off switch exposed. That way I have easy access to them and there's just definitely more play value. Now, I am going ahead and painting the top part of this or the backing in a different color. I've masked out my blues and I am going to paint it now in black. The same acrylic black ink and just to make it look obviously different than the first phone. And then we'll do some weathering to this paint. Now keep in mind that each artist has its own vision and if you've got your own diorama then you probably don't want these colors. Choose the colors that are best for your diorama. The point is that this video is just a basis for you to get ideas on how to complete your accessories, especially if you have the opportunity to purchase one of these 3D prints which are actually accessories for your diorama. That way you have control of what it looks like instead of actually buying an expensive piece that's over $100. Ten en mente que cada artista tiene su visión final y es muy diferente uno del otro. Esta es solamente una idea de lo que tú puedes hacer para finalizar tu pieza si logras comprar una pieza de resina y pintarla para 
tu diorama. Los colores que tú utilices serán tu gusto, lo que tú necesitas para cumplir el escenario que tú quieres armar. Así evitas pagar excesivo dinero por una pieza tan pequeña. Tú tendrás el control de la vista final. Now this is just a simple lighting setup and as you can tell those perforations on the side look pretty cool once they're lit. But we're still missing a few details and one of those is the lettering. And yeah, we're also missing some decals. Esto es solamente un escenario pequeño con breve iluminación o limitada iluminación, pero nos faltan unos detalles, las letras que van sobre el teléfono y algunas calcamonías. So the lettering is dry transfer lettering, and this works out so well and so easy, you just got to make sure you put it in the spot that you need, dead center in this case. Así es que ahora utilizaremos unas calcamonías que se realmente se calcan. Y lo bueno de ello y lo que necesario es que tienen que estar centradas. Lo bueno es que no tienes que usar ninguna química ni agua para poder aplicarlas. Con un lápiz es lo suficiente. So to place our lettering or our panel inside the space, I went ahead, as you can tell at the top and bottom, I added two small ridges or bands so that it will rest against those and doesn't fall in. And that's where I'm going to apply a thin bead of super glue. Así que para tener una instalación nítida y rápida, voy a poner un poquito de pega loca sobre esta pieza que coloqué adentro, donde entonces ahora puede colocarse el rótulo sin caerse adentro. certainly looks that much more like a phone and of course I even added the phone directory at the bottom so those little details make all the difference como ves esos detalles hacen la gran diferencia tanto el directorio como el rótulo con la letra correcta ahora nos falta otro detalle Now this last step is totally optional. You may not like graffiti, so you don't have to do it. I don't mind it, I think it looks more authentic, so I'm going to use it. These are wet transfer decals that are meant for model railroading, so they're actually very small scale. Unfortunately, they're still too big for this unit. Now, we're only going to cut out the ones that are in scale for what we need. And yes, wet transfer means you have to get them wet to remove them off of the backing. Este último paso es completamente opcional. Quizás no te guste el graffiti, así que no lo uses. A mí no me molesta y realmente para mí lo hace ver más real. Entonces, estos son graffiti o calcamonías que se tienen que mojar para desmontarlas y son en escala para lo que es de ferrocarril. Entonces, son relativamente pequeñas, pero aún así son sumamente grandes para el objeto que estamos queriendo cubrir. Si es que solamente vamos a seleccionar las que están en la escala apropiada para el objeto, en este caso el teléfono, que queremos cubrir con este arte de graffiti. Once you've selected your decals, make sure they are submerged completely into the water for a few minutes. Have your tweezers or the tongs you're going to use to pull them out because they are very small and then brush them off onto the surface with an actual brush. You can actually wet the surface first so that it gives you a floating media so that you can actually move it around and place it where you need it. It takes a little while and it's best to select more than one because you may tear them in the process.
Coloca tus calcamonías usando un pincel para que no vayas a romper las calcamonías. Una vez que estén secas, puedes sellarlos para que sean permanentes. Once your decals are dry, you can then seal them so that they become permanent upon the surface you applied them. So this is our finished piece. We've got one flicker board in there that has different selections and we have a button sell with switch and both are two different companies. Combining them together gives us this really awesome look and look at the decals how much nicer or authentic it makes this phone look. So the lights that are in the actual board are from lightmybricks.com and the button cell in the switch are from evandesigns.com. So take a look at those both in the description and you'll be able to find the products that you need. Let's go on to the fire hydrant. This was a lot of fun. So once you sand primer, you can paint. Una vez que liges y pongas el primer, puedes hacer la pintura. Utilizaremos esta misma pieza dos veces para darle dos diferentes vistas. So we're going to use the same piece and give it two different looks. Obviously, we're going to fully repaint it the second time. Now be patient because yellow is a difficult color to work with. So it will require several layers. Ten paciencia ya que el color amarillo es uno de los más difíciles con el cual trabajar. Así es que utiliza varias capas de color para crear la vista o necesaria que quieres de ese color. your fire hydrant totally yellow no marks at all make it look brand new but if you want some weathering you can do it like this and you can kind of make it look like a cartoony looking hydrant or you can even add cell shading if you wanted to remember this is only one idea or rendition of this unit Ten en mente que no tienes que pintarlo de esta manera, puedes dejarlo completamente amarillo sin ninguna marca. Pero si tú quieres una característica más de caricatura, puedes utilizar esta técnica o alguna otra que tú tengas en mente. So choose how you want to paint it, since it's your diorama that you will be utilizing this piece with. Decide cómo quieres pintarlo, ya que será la pieza que vas a estar utilizando tú en el diorama o la escena que quieres crear. Now this is the same piece as earlier. It just started from scratch and then finished it off in a different paint scheme. Es la misma pieza que anterior, solamente comenzamos de cero y la pintamos completamente diferente. The last piece in this segment is a newspaper vending machine or rack, however you want to call it. And this is also a 3D resin print. Sand, primer, and then paint. It's all going to depend on what color you want it to be. It can be red, blue, black, brown, you decide. And you can decide whether you want to weather it or not. Esta es la última pieza que tenemos en este segmento. Es una caja para periódico que está en la calle. Ahora tú decides qué color la quieres pintar, pero primero tienes que lijarla, poner el primer y entonces utilizar los colores de pintura el cual tú quieres y desees tener en tu escenario. Azul, rojo, negro, café, amarillo. Tú decides.
now you need to decide how you want to paint it or decorate it. If you want to add the wear and tear to it, definitely go ahead and do so. There are different techniques to do it and you can use any of which you are comfortable with. Now, if you want to keep it looking shiny brand new, then don't add any of the weathering to it. Again, this is your diorama, your diorama piece and accessory. You decide how it should look. Recuerda que tú decides cómo pintar tu accesorio. Si tú quieres ponerle algo más rústico, decisión tuya. Si tú lo quieres tener más limpio y nuevecito, tú decides. Usa la técnica con la cual tú estás más cómodo, ya que esta es la pieza para el diorama o el escenario que tú estás creando. So I hope that you learned something today and I hope you liked the segment. If you do, please give it a comment, a like, and of course, please subscribe for more content that is on the way. Si te gustó el segmento, tienes alguna pregunta, puedes ponerlo en los comentarios y por favor pone un like y si es posible, suscríbete. Hay más contenido en camino.